All right, going to attempt to tie the craft for game changer for like the 15th time. My SD card, I don't know, got all wonky on me one time. The battery died another time. They take quite a quite a while to tie, so it's a bit frustrating. But it's not like I don't have the time. So, anyways, here we go. Going to be using the starter pack articulated fish spines by uh, Fish Skull. It's got all the uh, spines you'll need to use. I'm going to be using uh, three 10 millimeter this size, uh, two 15, a 20, and a 25. So it's going to be kind of a big, big girl. Spinning it up with Vivas GSP 100. Um, gonna be using a bunch of craft fur, um, maybe some uh, filler flash for some support in a different array of colors. We've got Senyo's uh, intruder wire we're gonna be utilizing. And uh, yeah, I'll cover some more stuff as we go through it. Okay, so, oh, also the hooks, I guess. So the rear hook is gonna be this Gamakatsu SL12S in a size two. It's an awesome hook. It's pretty heavy gauge, straight eye, big gap. Good for these uh, game changers. Uh, and then the front hook's gonna be this Aberdeen Predator in a uh, three odd by A-Rex. This is an awesome hook. It was a really good company too. They make some badass stuff. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do here is just a couple turns. And we're going to start with uh, yellow craft fur in the tail there. So the key that I've found to tying this craft fur changer specifically uh, to have it turn out the way I want it to look is, is really you got you to gotta make those fibers short in the back. We're, we're building a taper. If you've watched any game changer uh, videos before, you know that's it's all about the taper, right? So if I just tying this whole clump and it's a three inch long tail back there, you know, you're gonna have to build everything a lot larger. I want it pretty small. So what I'm gonna do against my better judgment is pull all these long hairs out. That's typically the ones we want to use, but I found that just the shorter guys, is, that's, that's what we want here. And we're gonna reverse tie this in because we want that tail to kind of, you know, flare out a little bit. You don't want it to just slick down. So I'm just gonna kind of even these ends up. There we go. Grab it and just push it over the top of that, that spine. Go around with, with two loose wraps. Once it's kind of secure, just maybe three or four more in there. Cool. Kind of puff it out a little bit. You could hollow out a pen, makes it good for when you're reverse tying to, to push everything back. Work your thread forward, and then just whip finisher off. You could add flash on the tail at this point if you wanted to before you whip finish it. Uh, this guy I kind of want mute. I'm not going to have any flash besides like the filler flash. and. Uh, some of that shoulder material, the body chenille. So I'm just gonna get my bodkin, put just a, a little touch of the Pro Sport Fisher UV resin, and just kinda light it up with the UV light. If I wanna touch on UV lights, they're not all created equal. Um, it's really worth to, to buy the big boy the infinity light. Uh, one of the bonuses, it's USB, so you don't have to go around buying batteries, or if it dies midway through a, a tie, you don't have to go to the store or search for batteries. It's a lot more powerful, so it's gonna, it's gonna cure stuff really quickly. I've had mine over a year now, maybe going on almost two. Um, it's just, it's awesome. It holds a charge forever, I mean weeks, and it's great, it's just a, a good tool. If you tie a lot of flies, I, I highly suggest that anybody that's coming to the shop knows I'm always pushing the infinity lights on them, but for good reason. 
just make tying so much more enjoyable and fast. So we want to get that other connection. We're going to get the next 10 millimeter. And I, I want to pry this up a little bit. Shouldn't have cut my nails yesterday. It just obviously makes it easier to slide on that attachment if you've got a, a little bit of a gap there. It's not just so tight. Easy peasy, right? Pop that guy out. This guy back in. One of the tricks to these flies that uh, somebody uh, found out is you have to get your thread base here where it where it connects back there to the um, previous one. There's obviously a little bit of a gap, so your fly can it allows that articulation to swim around. But they found that sometimes it'll, it'll causes it to foul. So if you if you get some zappa gap and you just kind of put some up there in that neck of the woods, and then really lightly walk your thread around. If you if you reef really hard down, your thread will slide down it. So you just want to close that up about halfway and then back down to the bottom. So we're going to add another stitch of yellow craft fur. So that's the th thing about this fly is like there's a couple little steps in there that we'll cover, but for the most part, you're doing the same thing. You're just making it larger each time. So I'm still going to pull out these long fibers. I don't want super, super long piece back here. This is, you know, the wrist of the fish, so the skinniest part. So it doesn't need to be mega shouldery and, and huge profile. And so here I'll actually pull out quite a bit of that under fur. We were talking about I don't want it to, to stand up really big back there yet. And I'll kind of level them out, you know. I th that's still long. Every time I tie this fly, this craft fur gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And the flies end up looking better and better. But it just it goes against everything. It's like, a, you know, the majority of flies that I normally tie are steelhead flies. And so you want those real wispy, airy, long fibers. So it's hard to kind of go against years of favoring those. So there we got our little, our little mini shoulder back there and this guy up front. So take the hollow pen and just push it all back. The bonus of using that Vivis GSP thread, like people have asked me like, oh, can I just use, you know, six odd or whatever? You, you can, you gotta be a little bit more delicate, but there's so many with these articulated spine um, flies and the connections and you're cutting wire off and on and there's just so many spots to nick your thread that I used to just kind of break thread a few times going through that fly and I just got over it. So the GSP stuff is really thin so you don't really notice it except it's just really strong. So just touching that thread with the UV. I mean, you can see how quick this stuff cures. It's like I just go around it for maybe five seconds total. She good. Third 10 millimeter spine. This guy, same thing, kind of pull that open a little bit if you can. Work, great. Okay. And just going to completely <clears throat> repeat that process. So if you're one of those people that's just, uh, I don't want to say impatient. It makes it sound like I'm ripping on you. But if you're impatient, you can just fast forward to the end of this spine because I'm going to do the same exact thing. I mean, literally, I'm going to touch it with Zappa Gap. I'm going to trim the craft fur. I'm going to tie it in backwards, whip finish it, and then we'll be on to the next one. Cover up that eye a little bit. Pull out the long hairs. Level it up. Push it over. Two loose wraps. Push it back with the pen. So you can see it's starting to flare out a little bit. If you want to control that taper, you can build these thread dams 
whoops, not on top, but just right in front of that craft fur, just kind of build in a cone. So it's going to be higher next to the craft fur, and lower in the front. We don't want the taper to be too big back here, so you can control it by just building those little thread dams. So we've got our, our rear kind of section, those three articulations, keeping it kind of airy. You know, you don't want just clumps of craft fur on there. The stuff moves really good when it's wet, but you don't want just a big wad of it on there. So we've got our three 10, mil, 10 millimeter sections. We want to go for our first 15 mil. Same thing, I'm going to kind of pry that guy open just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so get our thread base. With this flat thread, I didn't really mention it, but just spin it a little bit it tends to help it grip. spin beforehand. Chartreuse. Same thing. Pulling out all those long guys. Pull out some of the guard hairs. Not all of them. You want to start to just start to build that shoulder a little bit. I'm gonna turn it around. Push it over the top of that shank and then again around two times real loose just to make sure to grab all that craft fur and then you can tighten it up with a couple wraps got our little shoulder back here but it's not touching it you don't want so much that it's actually covering your previous work there so if it is you can just go in there with a pair of scissors and clean it up a little bit Work that thread through. And again, we're going to build that small thread dam. So, obviously, we got a bunch of shank. We're going to add just another little clump of chartreuse on there. Put it on backwards. Two loose wraps. Tighten it down. So that one's kind of getting in the way a little bit. So we're going to just, just a little trim there. So you can see I'm not tying in a bunch, just huge clump, clumps of, of craft fur. Kind of want to keep it airy. Little thread dam there. Mm -hmm. Starting to get a little taper there. Pull the thread. So we're gonna go ahead and attach our first, our first hook, our rear hook here, and we're gonna use that uh, Senyo's intruder wire and get our Gamakatsu SL12S short. Get him out of there for a second. This guy in. Got a thread base on here. Now I put a little bit more brushable zap gap on this part. I'll, I'll put it back to the bend and then I'll get it almost to the, the eye of the hook. And that's just because when I take my shitty scissors and I cut this intruder wire and I'm only cutting, like that's probably too much and that's probably like three and a half inches. I'm going to lay it down right on top of that hook. And so it just helps it kind of stick where you want it. Wrap it back. And here you actually want to go down the bend of the hook just a little bit. And I'll tell you the reason for that right now. When you, to get these flies to swim the best, you want that to be level, you know what I'm saying? Like you want that eye to be, like, I think I might have just 
done two turns too many down there, so I made it a little bit higher. You want it to be level with the front hook when it ties in. See, so a little high now. I'll get pretty specific with this. I really want it to be straight. I think it just makes these flies swim a lot better. So now we're getting there. So we'll just put that in. Bad scissors here and cut. Tie it all the way back in there. Pretty small little loop back there. I don't really want a giant loop back there. So there that is. <clears throat> And we'll probably uh, we'll probably do another little touch of chartreuse on the rear of this hook. Still pulling out the longest fibers. Not pulling out as much guard hair. Kind of checking it. It's going to be right here. Looks good. Push it all the way back. Two loose wraps. It's all spun around there. Tighten down. Use our pen to flip it. Go ahead and build that thread dam in front of it. To your liking, how you want to taper this. Each time you build one of these, you want that shoulder to get just a little bigger. But in the rear here, you still want to keep it pretty low. But what we're going to do is bump it up just a little bit on this next section. So I'm going to take some of this uh, chocolates uh, finesse body chenille and uh, chartreuse. Cut off just maybe like nothing really, an inch and a half. We're not going to use very much of this stuff. And we're going to cut on either side of that basically just braid or mono braided together just to get access to that core you just get a way better tie-in point if you tie in just just the tip of that core rather than trap the materials and just kind of as you wrap it around just like you would anything just sweep all those all those fibers back and I don't know how many times we're gonna go around maybe three Maybe more, maybe four. Just kind of judge it and look at it. That's three right there. We'll go four. And I'm pulling on this stuff pretty good. Each time I go around, it kind of helps stand those, those materials up a little bit more. And you get a, a nice tight wrap through there. Pulling the really long hairs out still. Pulling a little bit of the guard hair out. And, you know, leveling it out. See how that's gonna look. That's gonna, so that's gonna be our first real big step up in the shoulder. Everything else has been pretty gradual. You don't want it to be crazy big, but definitely we're hitting like the midsection of a fish. That's what we're kinda, trying to mimic here. So two turns, hold tight, two more, we're good. That's right up against that uh, body chenille, so that's fine. Get our empty pen and push everything back. Work that thread through. And build that cone. So you can see without it, it's already trying to come back over itself. Build that thread dam. Like I said, about medium pressure on, on pulling down on that thread. I want it tight in there, but I don't want to just rip it through the other thread layers. And that GSP definitely will. So now we got our little, little shoulder kind of helping <clears throat> prop up that craft fur.
Okay, so that section's all done. Nice taper to it. Gonna attach our next 15 mil spine. Bend that out just a little bit. There we go. Pop that hook out. Get our thread base going. A little bit of zap. Back on that gap a little bit. And just gonna fill that a little bit like halfway and back down to the bottom. So we got yellow and chartreuse. We're gonna move to the new color. We'll go to that kind of fiery orange. We just got like a little orange, orange estes there. That will do like the chartreuse section. We'll, we'll prop that second clump up a little bit more. So, pulling out the really long fibers. Like I said, it's basically the same thing over and over with this fly. So you get a lot of practice, which is nice. Those, I'm guessing, are a little too long still. Shorten them up just a little. We're going to take this clump, turn around backwards, over the shank, two loose wraps, we're good, tighten her up, take our hollow pen, push it back, get that thread up there, whoops, don't go over the materials, make a small thread dam. Allowing that taper to build up a little bit. And then we're just going to take about an inch and a half of that, that orange uh, Estes there. You can use chenille or whatever. It's not super specific to that material. Just do maybe two or three wraps right in front of that craft fur. go leaving some room at the head there to add that second clump of craft fur cut our second clump of craft fur leaving a lot more of those guard hairs in on this chunk just to continue our taper flipping around backwards push it up onto that estes Loose wraps. And then push it all back with the, uh, the hollow pen there. This is one of the reasons I like this GSP. When you've got little room to work with, you can kind of manhandle these materials and like shove it, force it back in there without it breaking. UV resin. And just kind of get it in there on those thread wraps. All right. So it's our 15 in front of our Kamikatsu SL12S short, size two. Getting a little bit bigger of a taper there. <clears throat> Starting to come together. And now we're gonna throw on that 20. There. Same thing, thread base. Zap the gap back there. And just fill in that gap about halfway. I'm gonna add some more of that orange, and we're gonna start with some of that Estes back there to help that taper continue.
about halfway, I'd say. All right, cut another chunk, a little bit bigger, larger amount of craft fur on this one. Just start to build up that taper even more. Still pulling those, those really long fibers out. We don't want those in there just yet. Put it in there. Around twice. Pulling everything real tight, make sure it's in there. That's a nice little shoulder right up against that Estes. That looks good. Take our hollow pin, push it back. And just build in a small thread dam for this guy. Nice thing about craft fur is if you accidentally make one too thick, like that's kind of borderline, the one in front, you can just go through and just just pluck it out a little bit, thin it out, make it shorter with finish this guy. Add our UV resin in there, light it up. Orange section, done. So now we're going to attach our front hook and we're going to use a, a 25 mil shank. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut this, this eye off just using a pair of dikes or some uh, pliers that have cutters on them. We're going to attach that to our fly like so. And then we're going to take this out and pop our A-Rex Aberdeen Predator three odd in the front there. There's that hook. Got our thread base. Put our zap -a gap there. So we've got the front hook tied on there. We grab our fly and just place it right on the side of this. And you want it, you don't want it too far back, right? You don't want it back here and you don't want it up front. You want some wiggle room there. So just kind of play with that a little bit. Right where the bend starts is kind of where I lengthen it out to. So this one's kind of hard to, to fill some of that gap just the way this hook is and the, well, the fact that it's a hook and not a shank, so it's got that point down there, but just kind of do your best. Just put a little zap on there and just try to lightly wrap up it. Really, really tight wraps here on this connection. I haven't had any of them pull out, but just to be sure, just really, really tight. And then I'm actually going to use UV cure on this because I really want to lock it in there. Not a bunch, you know. I don't want it. I don't want a thick coat of this. So I kind of just put some on and. Mash it around. Let me move on to this fiery red here. We're going to tie just a little stitch of that orange uh, Estes in there too. Just tie that guy in. 
kind of right at the barb of the hook. Wrap this guy forward. Okay. Cut a chunk of this guy off. A little bit a little bit thicker of a, a chunk of uh, craft fur here just to continue that taper. Still pulling the really, really long ones out of there, but leaving nice kind of medium length ones in. Just getting a little bit longer there. So let's see. It's pretty good. Now since it's such a long shank, I, I tend not to throw it all the way around, push it on like we have been. I haven't had real good luck with that when it's really a, a longer shank like that. So we're just going to put it on top. Still two loose wraps there. Before we tighten it down, we're just going to kind of spin it around everything. Make sure it's all kind of equal around there. Take our hollow pen, push it all back. Make a small thread dam. We're gonna do another one of those. Since we're kind of getting near the end of this fly, I'm gonna start to let that some of those longer craft or craft hair uh, pieces stay in there. So, like that's really long, we're going to still take those extra long ones out, but we'll probably keep those in. Hardly pulling any of that under fur out. Now that we've come forward a little bit, we can go back to just pushing it all the way up. Around twice. Pulling real tight. So that's kind of bumping into that guy a little bit more than I'd like. So we're just going to kind of come in there and, and just so it's not just overlapping it. You want all that stuff to be moving kind of independently. But you still want a shoulder there. And another dam. Starting to get some volume there. Maybe even one more. And you know how much you want to blend these colors together is all personal preference. It's kind of fun about using craft fur. Again, it's it's fairly inexpensive, so you don't feel about feel bad if you're using a ton of it. And you can do all sorts of different color combinations, blend stuff together. So, shove it over, let's get it where you want it. Two light wraps, snug it up. Another maybe smaller thread dam here. That looks good. Cool. So two options here. You can just get your black craft fur, reverse tie it in real big up front and be done. Um, I've been Playing around with this stuff quite a bit, this uh, Blaine Chocolates body tubing. So you can do some cool stuff. So I'm gonna just demo that just so you guys can kind of see something different. Make just a thread base, something to 
so it can stick to it. And take your crappy scissors, cut off about an inch and a half for this stuff. It will come apart on you, um, so you want to you want to singe the end, singe the ends once you cut it off. You don't need to melt them crazy, just enough so they don't kind of unravel on you. And then you want to put just a little layer of tap gap on that thread. This stuff's pretty slick, wants to spin a lot. Um, let's go ahead and just pop that guy on there. There we are. Give it a couple turns. The stuff's pretty slick, so it wants to spin on you. So just get your zappy gap again. That will help it uh, kind of lock in place. Nice and good. And then you just push this. I'm really bad at this. So you just push this tubing. Oops. Push this tubing. And you want it to basically fold over itself. See, I told you I was really bad at this. We're getting there. You get better working with materials over time. This one's no exception, but this one is kind of weird when you first start out with it. Um, so it's it's completely over the material right now, folded back over itself. <clears throat> Just push it forward again till it's off all that crap fur and tie it kind of directly in on top of the other section. Grab some UV res here. Not an ungodly amount, but just make sure you're kind of getting it all around there. Hit it with the light. That's pretty much locked in there, not going anywhere. Cut your thread. And so tying this in like that, push it back over itself again, and it's going to create this cool little, well, damn, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And so that's just going to be a nice prop. You know, there's holes in it, so it's not going to be horrible to cast or anything like that, but it's just going to prop it up there. So if you just get your, your thread wraps again in front, This really helps it keep its its profile over time. You know, you fish these flies a bunch, and they're just going to get matted down more and more and more. Uh, this just helps it kind of keep it keep its original form a little bit better. Uh, you could have added a thing of black crafter and then this to have it a little bit closer to the front. So if you stick eyes on it, you got something to push. It's not that big of a deal here. Um, what I'm going to do is use it to kind of prop out my peck fins. I'm just going to use a couple of feathers off a hen saddle here. And as far as peck fins go, it's really dealer's choice. You can use, there's so many different types of feathers that you could use anything that looks like a peck fin. You could use three or to six or a bunch of crazy legs or little rubber legs. Um, just cut real short, like, you know, an inch or something like that. Just stick them out the sides or you can use natural feathers like this or whatever. It's kind of just experiment. I do like my peck fins rather large though. I feel like if you're going to put it on there, let them see it. All right. Time for the uh, black crafter head, right? So I'm just going to Get a good chunk of this stuff, kind of our thickest clump that we're going to cut out. I'm still going to reverse tie this just because I like the way the guard hairs are going to be 
turned around and I don't have to trim them and it makes kind of a cleaner head. So, like so, push it up in there. Still two loose wraps around. Everything kind of set where you want it. And you can pull pretty tight to cinch it in there. Any little fibers that didn't get trapped in there are gonna fall out. Kind of spread that around equally. And our last thread dam, not very big. Just kind of want to angle those craft fur fibers back. You can see I didn't have to use that much craft fur up front because I got that that um, that body tubing in there. So it really adds mass without. A bunch of material which makes flies easier to cast and they, I think they swim better just breathe a little bit easier tapers in there we might add just a little one little more clump in there though tying it in reverse still pushing it on there around and around go. No works. Try to get everything back so we can just get our whip finish in there. What I'm going to do that same trick where I'm just going to put some UV resin on the thread. Once it's on there, about a whip finish because that's not coming off. So that's it. That is the craft fur game changer. Nice taper to it. Things gonna move great. And you could go through and, and take a sharpie bar that whole thing up. I kind of like them both ways. Um, this one I'm just going to leave just with that color blend going in it. No, no real, uh, no, no bars, no bar marking or anything like that. But yeah, 